so I just bought a new camera and I thought that would be a good opportunity to talk about some of the issues that come about when you do upgrade from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera or today more specifically if you are upgrading from a cropped sensor camera to a full frame camera. The issue that I want to talk about today is something called effective focal length or range. So before I talk about effective focal length, let's talk about the difference between crop sensor camera and full frame camera. Now in the DSLR world, the industry standard for sensors is 35 millimeters. That means that the sensor inside the camera is 35 millimeters, about an inch and a half wide. Okay, that should sound familiar, 35 millimeters is the old film format. So that is the standard, it's called full frame, and some people refer to these cameras as professional level. Now full frame or 35 millimeter sensors tend to be higher quality than the sensors that are called cropped sensors. A cropped sensor, which is what is inside this DSLR camera, is smaller than the 35 millimeter wide by a factor of about 1.5 to 1.6, depending on the camera. If you have a Sony, Nikon, or Pentax, the crop factor is 1.5. Canon, it's 1.6. What does the crop factor mean? Well, if you take 35 millimeters and divide it by 1.5, you get about 23, 24 millimeters. That's the width of a crop sensor uh, that's inside a crop sensor camera. So on this APS-C camera with a crop factor of 1.5, I have a 70 to 400 millimeter lens attached to it. The effective focal length for this lens is actually 105 to 600 millimeters. So how did I get that? Well, I take whatever the focal length is I'm shooting at and multiply that by the crop factor. That will be your effective focal length. So if I'm shooting at 400 millimeters, I'm actually going to get a shot that appears like 600 millimeters. Now, in comparison, if I put this same lens on this full frame camera, I'm going to have an effective focal length of 70 to 400, the actual focal length of the lens, because it's capturing the full frame of that lens. Whereas on my crop factor, it's cropping out a portion of that full frame, and I'm left with what's, what looks like a more zoomed in photograph. So if you are shooting wildlife, that's really a big advantage. So essentially, I have 600 millimeters that I'm shooting with, um, with this camera. And there's one other advantage to, to all of this. Um, think about the cost of lenses, especially very large, fast, prime, um, say 600, 500, 600 uh, focal length lenses for wildlife. And I don't know about you, but spending over $10,000 on a lens is, that's a pretty big chunk of money. So I worked around that um, somewhat by owning a crop sensor camera. Because I have this lens, I can shoot at 600 millimeters. But I also had a prime lens that was not 600 millimeters, it was a 300 millimeter lens and attached to this camera, it became 450. Then I took a teleconverter, right? So that multiplies your focal length. And because it was a very good prime lens, fast lens, I was able to attach a two times teleconverter to it, multiplied the focal length by two, that's 300 times two, 600. And then you multiply that by the crop factor. I had a 900 millimeter lens on this camera to shoot wildlife. So obviously there is some advantage to using a crop sensor camera, especially if you are shooting wildlife. So why upgrade to a full frame if that's the case? So given the advantage of the greater effective focal length with this camera compared to this one, is this going to be a camera that I can use for my wildlife photography? 
Well, obviously I upgraded because it is a higher quality camera. Not only that, it has greater resolution. This being 24 megapixels, this being 42 megapixels. So my first question I had was if I shoot wildlife with this camera, will I get the same quality or maybe even higher quality shots even if I crop out a large portion of the image to make it comparable to what I get with this camera. So I went out and shot some birds, um, compared the two cameras with this lens, and here's what I found. So obviously the difference between the two you can see has to do with the effective focal length. With the full frame, I have a more difficult time filling the frame with the bird. So what would happen now if I cropped out a portion of this photograph so that it was comparable to the other photograph? What I'm primarily concerned with is sharpness. So when I zoom in and look at the sharpness and compare the two, Wow, I don't even see a difference. In fact, the sharpness appears a little better with the full frame camera shot. So is this going to be my wildlife camera now? Knowing that I can crop a large portion of the shot out and still maintain quality and comparable resolution as I would with this camera. I mean, I, I don't really like giving up all that resolution and having to crop out, but since I know that this is a quality camera, it's done very well for me with 24 megapixels, I would be doing the same with this camera and maybe getting a little more of an edge as far as dynamic range, as far as um, the, uh, the sharpness. Uh, and one other thing is that I've got an autofocus system here that's more precise and faster. So there's a lot of advantages for using this full frame compared to this crop factor camera for shooting wildlife. One other advantage I just thought of, I tend to clip the wings of birds when I'm photographing them. So having this full frame will help me to avoid that more easily. So if you are looking to upgrade from your uh, APS-C camera to a full frame camera, just understand how effective focal length is going to change with that full frame. But knowing that you have a higher quality camera and make sure that your resolution is higher, if you're going from 24 to 42, for instance, you know that you're going to have a lot of breathing room to crop out those unwanted portions of the photograph, especially if you are photographing wildlife.